So is it possible to max out your survivor rank in Dying Light before even starting the first assignment? I'm talking level 25 survivor rank on 0% story and unlocking legend levels right at the beginning of the game. Well, that's what I wanted to find out, so I started a new save and dived back into the story to give it a go. I'll be leaving timestamps in the description if you want to be able to jump to points of interest more easily. And uh, to begin with, there are a number of cutscenes that introduce you to the game, and this first one is not skippable. But if you are new to Dying Light, you'll need to watch them for the story, otherwise you're not going to know who anyone is or what's going on, to be honest. The first opportunity to check out your inventory is when you wake up in Brecken Tower after being rescued by Jade. There are three skill trees unlocked at this point, but the one we're interested in here is the first one. So what is your survivor rank? Well, when you open it up for the first time, you get this hint telling you that it gives access to supporting abilities, blueprints and gadgets. And to increase your survivor rank, you need to complete quests, help survivors and participate in challenges. Now, that is going to be a slow process, I can tell you, and you'd be unlikely to max out the skill tree by the end of the story this way. However, there is a much quicker way to unlock these perks and get the better equipment offered by the shops as a result. Now, after completing some tutorials in the tower, you'll be sent to the Core Master, where he'll tell you to look out for airdrops, as they are a real game changer. And this is what he means. Airdrops contain disaster on-site relief packages, but it will be a challenge for new players to reach them before Rice's men, and if they are there before you, they'll probably kill you at this stage in the game. But there is a much simpler way of finding these packs, and we're going to be going to the place where the Core Master got this shirt to find them. So if you've watched all of the cutscenes, it'll be about 35 minutes until you finally get to leave the tower. Your first quest, as you can see there in the top right, is to get a shot of Antizine from Dr. Zir. Although we're not going to be completing that quest just yet, as we want to find a quarantine zone that isn't marked on the map yet. In fact, you can see that the whole map is blacked out at this point, but you can just about make out the shapes of the buildings, and if you look just north of the tower, this is the one we're looking for. So drop a waypoint on it and back out of the map, and when you use your survivor sense you'll see which direction to take and how far away it is. Of course you don't have any skills or abilities at the moment, so the only way you're going to get to this quarantine zone is to literally just run in that direction. And uh, yeah, you don't have a grappling hook, so uh, climbing and stuff is going to be a lot harder than it can be uh, once you've unlocked those perks. But for now we've got no choice, and uh, it's okay because the zombies at this point in the game are also as weak as you and pretty much just ignore you as you run past them. It really doesn't take that long to get to where we want to go, and this is our destination. This quarantine zone is called the Stuffed Turtle Food Market, and it is a very well-known one in the Dying Light community. All you need to do is approach the front doors and investigate. Now, if it's your first playthrough, then I think there was a collectible note here, but it doesn't reappear on the new save because you've already got it. And before you can enter, you have to radio Spike, which is pretty funny, as we haven't even met him yet at this point in the story. Uh, it's because we're trying to do things out of order here. Uh, once the conversation is over, a message flashes up telling you that you've found a new quarantine zone, and you can now go inside. So the most time-consuming part of going in and out of the Stuffed Turtle Quarantine Zone is the load screen, and it will depend on whether or not you use an SSD or a hard drive as to how long it takes. I have actually edited the clip down for most of the video, but here is actually my load time before we get into the store itself. The first thing you see once you're inside is your objective, and it is to retrieve all disaster relief packs in the store, which is what we need in order to level up, as I said at the beginning of the video. Uh, you have to accept this challenge in order to start, but at this early stage in the game, I'd recommend not completing the objective. So you won't receive the 2,500 XP reward, as it says there, because uh, we're only going to collect three disaster relief packs. I'll explain why in a moment. All three of these packs are in this main room, and the only danger here is the electrified floor, which you can deactivate by flipping the switch on the other side of the room. So, carefully make your way along this plank and along this shelf unit, trying to avoid the hanging wires, although that is quite difficult. Here is your first pack, then jump over to the adjacent rack, and you can now jump over to the switch to make the floor safe. But, don't step off the pallet too soon afterwards, or you'll get a shock. By the way, you'll be hearing this a lot, so you may want to turn the sound down after a while. Shit, the goddamn switch broke down. This is the reason I wouldn't recommend going for all five packs. 
Two of them are locked behind these doors, and although they have easy locks to pick, the zombies in here are much tougher than the ones outside at this early stage in the game. You just don't have the skills or resources to waste on these last two packs yet, and the great thing about this place is that you get to keep the three packs when you leave, even if you haven't completed the challenge. And that, and the fact that this is a repeatable quest, is the exact reason we are here. So, we've collected the first pack, and the second one is on the counter here, where you'll also find a lockpick. Now I'd advise taking this as they do come in handy when looking for resources later. The third and final one is around this corner and on the shelf, and once you have all three, you can now leave by exactly the same way you came in. A message will remind you that you haven't finished the challenge yet, but just ignore that and accept. Now, all you have to do is just turn around and re-enter the stuffed turtle and repeat the process as many times as you like, as all of the packs and resources will respawn each time. You'll probably notice now upon re-entering the store that your torch has switched off again. There is a little cheat you can use to stop this from happening and it's simply jumping down onto the electrified floor and staying there until you've died. When you respawn now your torch will still be on and will stay on even after leaving and re-entering the quarantine zone again. I wouldn't waste med packs in here as when you die you just respawn where you left off and your health is fully restored each time. But, you will lose survivor points in the beginning, it isn't much to begin with, but be warned that the higher your survivor rank, the more points you'll lose, so it's best to get as many packs as possible before then. So once you've done this quite a few times, you will get into a bit of a flow, and you'll find that it's possible to be in and out of the stuffed turtle in about 24-25 seconds, not including load times, which, you know, is pretty quick, to be honest, and uh, it just gives you an example of how many times you'll be able to do this in an hour. And uh, if you want to keep tabs on how many disaster relief packs you've got, then you just need to open your inventory. And as you can see, it didn't take long before I had 51 packs. Uh, so it seemed like a good time to go back to the Quartermaster and see just how much I'd level up with this amount. Now, if you go back out to the road, you can actually see the tower from the Stuffed Turtle. But this time we don't need to run back there, as there's a little trick we can now use to kind of fast travel there. If you open your inventory and go into Quests, just highlight Awakening and select Track Quest. You'll now see the original quest to get your shot of Antazine is back, and the next thing we have to do is quit out of the game to the menu screen. Now you don't have to worry, you won't lose anything as the game saved after leaving the stuffed turtle. And when you get back to the menu screen, simply select continue and you'll spawn right back at the tower. But the first thing you'll notice is that the doors to the tower are still closed. And you'll only be able to gain entry now by completing the current quest and going to Dr. Zir for our shot. Using your survivor sense, you'll see that it's still local to the tower, and it doesn't take long to get to. And after getting your shot, you actually get to meet Spike now. <laughs> and then he gives you your first assignment, which again, we are not actually going to complete, as we'll need the quest open still in order to fast travel back from the stuffed turtle again later. After a quick run back to the tower, you can see that the doors have now been opened, and we have access to the quartermaster to deliver our first drop. When you're standing back in front of the Quartermaster, you'll see a prompt to deliver the drop. Select that and the amount of survivor points awarded will be revealed and then a message flashes up to say that you've ranked up too. So for my first 51 packs I got 51,000 XP and I leveled up by 5 survivor ranks to level 6. But the amount of XP we need uh, for ranks after this point will keep going up, effectively moving the goalposts and therefore making our task a bit more of a grind. But you do earn more for the packs the higher your survivor rank, so that helps. You will have to spend a little time longer in the stuffed turtle to achieve the max level survivor rank, but it's very much worth it in the long run. Now when you look at the map this time, you'll see that we've now opened up a corridor between the tower and the stuffed turtle, which is marked as a quarantine zone, because it is unlocked and is a repeatable quest. This means we can now fast travel there from the tower, but don't forget to open your inventory and track the stuffed turtle quest before you quit to the main menu, otherwise it won't work. Again, select continue, and this time you'll spawn right at the front doors, and when you want to go back to the tower, you'll now have to track the first assignment quest, which will take you back to Spike. 
So now I knew how much XP I was likely to get, I stayed in the stuffed turtle until I got another 100 disaster relief packs this time, and I wondered then if I had enough XP to unlock the grappling hook. So I went back to the tower, and sure enough I ranked up to level 13, and the grappling hook becomes available at level 12. So I'd reached a milestone now, and I'd gone beyond the halfway point to maxing out the survivor rank skill tree. You'll see a message flash up telling you you can now collect the grappling hook from your stash or the quartermaster. And having a grappling hook will also make the stuffed turtle much quicker, as if you step forward a bit on the first ledge, you'll just about be able to reach the wall on the far side, and it will land you right in front of the switch. But of course now you'll have to go back for the first pack, as you've bypassed the shelf climbing part. So at this point you might have gotten a bit tired of repeating the stuffed turtle run over and over and now you've reached a decent survivor rank you might want to spice things up a bit with a bit of zombie killing. I mean that's what the game's all about right? So the stuffed turtle is in a perfect location really as there are a few police vans and ambulances there and this is where those lockpicks are going to come in handy. Uh, the police vans are great for finding weapons but they do have a very hard lock. It is worth it though because at level 13 the weapons in these will be much more powerful than the ones you've been given up to now. The ambulances have med packs in them and they have easy locks. As I said earlier, you don't need med packs in the stuffed turtle because you just respawn in there when you die. But if you die out here, you'll respawn in the nearest safe zone, which can be a bit of a pain. Now you could use the fast travel trick to get back, but if you want to start building your agility, now would be the time as you have a grappling hook and simply making your way back and forth across the map will quite quickly get you to a higher level. And now you've found some decent weapons, you can get to work on that power level too. Of course by hacking some zombies to bits. Okay, they're still weak at this point, and as we're at 0% story, the weapons we have will be very effective against them. And leveling up is fairly quick now, and a lot of fun too. But I would recommend going back into the stuffed turtle and cracking on with the farming of the packs, so you can get to that max level survivor rank target, and therefore unlock legend levels. So it actually took another 200 packs before I finally maxed out survivor rank, and when you hand that last lot in, you get a welcome message confirming that you have now unlocked legend levels. So, in total, it was roughly 350 packs to achieve this, and if you have the patience to grind in the stuffed turtle, it's entirely possible to get here in one afternoon. Now, if you're tempted to get a few legend levels in before going back to the story, then let me show you a trick to boost the XP you learn from the packs by 10 times. Each pack collected on normal mode once you've unlocked legends is now worth 12,000 XP. Which sounds a lot, but the amount you need for each legend level also goes up each time, therefore moving the goalposts even further than before. This is why we want to take advantage of this trick to tip the odds in our favour again. So here it is. You need to go back to the stuffed turtle, and just an example here, I've collected another 50 packs. Then to fast travel back to the tower, we need to make sure you track the first assignment and quit to the main menu. And this is where we do something different. You now select play instead of continue, and on the next screen at the bottom there you'll see an advanced option. Select this and then choose the switch to nightmare option and confirm that you are sure. And when you respawn this time with Spike, just run back to the tower and deliver the drop to the quartermaster. However, you are now on Nightmare, and as I said earlier, you'll get 10 times the amount of XP as a result of this. So you're actually getting 120,000 XP for each pack. And the first 50 packs on Legend will put you up to level 11. So now you'll be able to spend these legend points on making your character more powerful and at this point you can only spend 5 points on your one handed weapons because it uh, moves the goalpost again and says that you need to pass level 20 in order to spend any more on it. So I just spent the rest of them on increasing the amount of health I had for now. If you go to the shop in the tower now you'll see you've got access to not only some powerful melee weapons but also firearms. And that part is a game changer as you wouldn't even find your first pistol until well into the story unless you'd gone through this process at the very start of the game. So if you've watched this video to the end I thank you and if you've enjoyed it please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to my channel for more Dying Light content. Cheers!